Welcome to your entertainment science fiction programming network, the entertainment sci-fi programming network. And so we say, buenos dias, zao an, ohio gozaimasu, zao shanghao, bonjour, and welcome. It's three o'clock where you are. What time is it on Mars? Maybe it's not three o'clock where you are. Maybe it's what time it is where you are. It's three o'clock somewhere in the world, maybe nowhere in the world, but it's three o'clock. What time is it on Mars? Interstellar brought up this ratio of one month to seven years. The further you get out in space, the slower time becomes to the point where you can get to this location where you spend one month and then seven years goes by on Earth. So we're gonna use that interstellar ratio of one month to seven years to calculate what time it is Three o'clock, what time is it on Mars? Let's use that one month to seven year ratio and a little bit of twist to it also. Um, so if you really get into it, don't because there's going to be a twist involved in it. So seven years to one month ratio. 31 day month. Let's use basic math. Now, some of you are going to say, oh, you can't use basic math because this is an algebraic factor that you got to use. And it's even quantum involved in it or geometry. Well, you know, we're going to use basic math. And uh, you can write me on Facebook. Look at the Aquify on Facebook and uh, send me a pop up. <laughs> write me a message on Facebook. All right, so we're gonna use basic math, 31 days. There's 12 months in a year. So seven years equates to 84 months. 84 months divided by 31 days in a month is 2.71. So each day that goes by in the one month area, 2.71 months goes by on Earth. One month to seven years. Each day that goes by, 2.71 months. So the following breakdown, we're going to break it down into hours. And then we're going to break it down into minutes. So a day is composed of 24 hours. So each 24 hours equals 2.71 months. So a 31 day month so that each 24 hour or every one day equals 84.01 days. 84.01 days equals 24 hours, which equals 3.50. So every 3.50 hours that goes by in the one month to seven year ratio, 24 hours goes by in the seven year location. So 3.50 hours goes by in the one month location 24 hours goes by in the seven year location. Each hour is composed of minutes. Each hour is composed of 60 minutes. So 3.50 hours times 60 minutes equals 210 minutes. So from the 3.50 hours, 210 minutes divided by 24 hours. 
because every 210 minutes or 3.50 hours equals 24 hours equals 11.4, which equals 11 minutes, one hour goes by. So in every 11 minutes in your one month location, an hour goes by in the seven year location. Starting point, <clears throat> midnight at 3 o'clock, well, starting point is midnight. So to go from midnight to 3 a.m. and 24 hours and 50 minutes have gone by. So midnight to 3 a.m., Three hours, 24 hours, and 50 minutes have gone by. Which means in the one month location, midnight, 3 a.m., 24 hours and 50 minutes have gone by, 3.50. So, Using the basic math to compute, um, you can use a in geometric computation or algebraic computation or refigure my basic math and say, your basic math is wrong. It should have been this instead of that. Well, you know, the Aquafy on uh, Facebook, message me. And while you're there, like. So like, <laughs> and if you're watching us on uh, YouTube or Spotify or Apple. We're in a host of different uh, platforms as far as podcasts. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, and also go into theaquify.com. Theaquify.com, they're living at the deepest parts of the ocean. What time is it there? Does it use the same time as our time? What kind of time do they use? What terms do they use for their time? What terms do they use for speed? Theaquafy.com, T-H-E-A-Q-U-A-P-H-I.com. Purchase the book. It comes from Amazon Kindle. You'll get it in a day or two. You know how Amazon is very quickly. Drop it off in your front door. You start reading. You'll enjoy it. So here's the twist. In the beginning, we said there is a little twist to this. Don't get all tied up into it. Don't start going quantum because whatever mathematics that you use, whether it's basic math, whether it's quantum or, or what geometry or algebra, it's all wrong. Everybody's wrong. My basic math is incorrect. Why? Because of the basics, because of the very basics. So let's go back to the very basics and we'll find out why this equation is incorrect. In the very basics, how do we get 24 hours? We get 24 hours because the earth makes one complete rotation on its axis every 23 hours and 56 minutes. And so we round it up and we say 24 hours. This 23 hours and 56 minute rotation of Earth on its axis gives us one day or 24 hours. Earth also makes an elliptical or slightly oval shaped orbit around the sun. And it takes one year for Earth to complete this elliptical, that is, oval-shaped orbit around the sun. The oval-shaped orbit that the Earth make makes that there is one point in Earth's orbit where it is closest to the sun, and that's called perihelion in January. And there's another point 
where it's furthest from the sun in July. Kind of reminds me of the podcast that we had, and hopefully you're following every podcast, right? whether you're following YouTube or Spotify, Apple, follow every podcast. Subscribe, and this way you don't miss one, because we had another podcast where we talked about traveling from planet to planet, traveling from galaxy to galaxy, and we got into this, right, about the galaxies and light years and, and speed. So if you're following that, then we're talking about this, and you're, you're into it, right? So get into it. Get the Aquafy. Purchase the novel. Read it. You're into it. Follow the podcast. We have a podcast every week. So as you're reading the novel, you follow the podcast, you're getting into it, and you say, is there any gear? So go on the aquify.com under merchandise and get your t-shirt. Get the gear that goes along with your favorite poster of the Aquify. You get into this atmosphere. We have nonstop great podcasts in science fiction. We are the entertainment science fiction programming network. So follow, subscribe, and purchase the novel. Purchase the gear. Get into the aquifer. Earth is tilted 23.5 degrees as it rotates around the sun. And what does that produce? It produces seasons. As the Earth rotates around the sun, Different hemispheres receives different amount of sunlight, thus producing seasons. So, to further calculate time on Earth, we have to calculate the distance east or west of the prime meridian or zero degrees longitude. The coordinated universal time starts at this point, zero degrees longitude, the prime meridian. There are over 24 different time zones on Earth. To derive the time zone, which means we divide the longitude in degrees by 15 in order to find the correct time zone in hours. Let's give an example. 150 degrees west longitude is 150 degrees divided by 15 degrees so the time is 10 hours behind the coordinated universal time longitudes for the Earth. So longitudes for the Earth and the Moon are measured from their prime meridian, that is 0 degrees to 180 degrees east to 180 degrees west. While all other planets outside of the Earth and the Moon, all other planets in our solar system, longitude is measured at 360 degrees prime meridian. Mars, and so we're comparing Mars and Earth and saying it's 3 o'clock on Earth, what time is it on Mars? And we're using the interstellar ratio of one month to seven years. So Mars orbits the sun because the sun also has this gravitational pull on Mars as on every planet in our solar system. Now, if you missed that podcast where we talked, go back and listen to it and you're going to come back to this podcast. And while you're there, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And when you're going to message me on Facebook, make sure to follow and make sure to like. And on YouTube, make sure to like it also. So Mars orbits the sun one rotation in 24.6 hours. 
the Earth 23.9 hours. So that one year on Mars equals 669.6 souls, or what we call on Earth days. One year on Mars is 669.6 souls. On Earth, it's 687 days. So Mars is 0.7 minutes longer than Earth. 0.7 minutes on Mars. So Mars is not the planet that is fits this ratio of one month to seven years. It's not Mars. So anyway, that's that's the well, you know, you really got into it and you remath my math and uh, so, yeah, so it's not Mars. It has the same gravitational pull from the sun that we do. Not much difference between Mars and Earth. Three o'clock on Earth, uh, slightly more than three o'clock on Mars, maybe 306, 307. So for the one month to pass by equaling seven years on Earth, it has to be on a planet where there is a serious time Delation. What do we mean by that? That means that as you're traveling and you're using a clock, you're watching this clock as you're traveling and that clock is slowing down. Instead of the clock is slowing down while we're at the same time we're looking at this clock and we're traveling, it's slowing down. At what speed are you traveling? There's only one speed to travel, and we talked about it in one of the past podcasts about intergalactic travel. So go back and look at it, and you'll see the speed that you need to travel. Now, what speed does the aquafi travel in? What do they use as speeds in aquafi? That's interesting. Go into theaquafi.com, purchase the novel, see what speed that they're traveling in. You're going to get into all it all of it. Follow this podcast as you're, as you're reading, right? With your favorite Aquify gear on. Okay, so for the one month to seven year ratio to work out, like Interstellar says, you have to see a serious time dilation as you're traveling. You're looking at a clock slowing down as you're observing that clock. As you're traveling, observing that clock, the clock is slowing down. For that to occur, it can't be Mars. This planet has to be close to a black hole. And that black hole has to have such a serious gravitational pull on this planet, it's causing time to slow down. What planet could that be? Well, Planet nine is closest black hole. Planet nine is in the triple star system, 1,000 light years from Earth. Well, we had a past podcast where we talked about light years. What does that represent? And we broke it down so that when we're saying light years now, you're you're up on it. Go back and listen to it while you're there. Like, subscribe, and come back and listen to this. And we have other podcasts. We're going to talk about more science fiction events. So Planet Nine, closest black hole in a triple star system. 1,000 light years from Earth. Planet Nine is in the star system HR 6819. The closest planet to Planet Nine is Pluto. Planet Nine is 56 billion miles from our sun. 
56 billion miles from our sun. How do you reach planet nine, 56 billion miles, 1,000 light years? You know what speed you have to use because you saw the previous podcast. <clears throat> we discuss how long it would take to get there, what speed you use. Go back into YouTube, Spotify, Apple, where you hear our podcast, listen, follow, subscribe. Purchase aquify.com and you'll see how to get to Planet Nine. Once you get there, you spend a month, you come back seven years later, it's passed by. If you spend more than a month, children have grown, become CEOs of corporations. We talked about that in one of our past podcasts. Go back and look at one of the past podcasts, or you might look back and you'll see a, a lineup of podcasts that you have. You see the Aquify episode, the Aquify podcast episode on YouTube. We have so many. L look at the, all of them and like them all. Subscribe. Go on Aquify.com, purchase your novel. Read about it. So you hear a lot of people say, a lot of people say, once they, start, once they saw Star Wars, they knew they had to do outer space movies. So these are directors. I saw Star Wars. I knew I had to do science fiction. Star Wars convinced them of science fiction. A lot of people got into science fiction because of Star Wars. But what about the creator of Star Wars, George Lucas? What did George Lucas see that inspired him to do Star Wars on our next podcast? See you then.